So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about sheaves of modules, uh, which is a, a thing in algebraic geometry. Uh, so let's go. So this is, I would just go briefly through the mathematics. Uh, so let X be a topological space. Uh, and the idea is I want to talk about uh, sheaves and pre-sheaves on X. Uh, so the way this works is that, first of all, we make a category. I mean, we don't have to, but... That's the language which is going to be used, so we may as well. Let's make the category of open subsets of X. So that's a category whose objects are open subsets of X. And there's a morphism from U to V. There's at most one morphism from U to V. There's a morphism from U to V if and only if U is a subset of V. Uh, and, I mean, if you want to think of this as a concrete category, uh, then you can think of the map from U to V, v as being the inclusion. Uh, so there you go, and um, and so that gives you you know that gives you a category uh, between any two elements U and V. There's at most one map, uh, and what's a pre-sheaf of sets on this topological space? X is literally nothing more than a contravariant functor uh, from the category from this category of open subsets uh, to the category of sets. That's a pre-sheaf of sets. Um, and so that's pre-sheaves, and then sheaves, um, you add an extra axiom. You add the sheaf axiom, uh, which just says something that is one of these things that you kind of get used to over time. Uh, in this context, when we just have topological space, you can do pre-sheaves and sheaves on a far more general object called a site, uh, which is a category equipped with some kind of topology. And this category opens X. Uh, it's equipped with some kind of topology, not in the sense of topological spaces, but in the sense of Grothendieck topology on a category. Uh, but if X has a topological space, uh, then opens X uh, does inherit a Grothendieck topology, but it's just the topology coming from X. And so we don't have to mention Grothendieck topologies at all, at least in this lecture. Uh, a sheaf of sets is going to be a pre-sheaf of sets satisfying an axiom, and the axiom is going to involve the topology on X. Um, so that axiom is that if we've got an open set U and it's covered by uh, possibly infinitely many open subsets UI of U, uh, then the idea is that because a pre-sheaf is a functor, so F is a functor, F is a contravariant functor, so the inclusions from UI into U give you maps from U to UI, uh, sorry, give you maps from F of U to F of UI. And so assuming uh, the category of sets has got products, which it does, uh, we get a map from f of u to the product of f of u i, and um, and the idea is that that map there should be an equalizer, uh, if you like this kind of language. That map there from f of u to the product over i of f of u i should be an injection, and the image of that injection should be precisely uh, the elements of the product of the f of u i, uh, which which become what's happened. It's the elements of the product. Uh, for which the two maps that I'm about to describe uh, give the same answer. <laughs> uh, and the two maps I'm about to describe, uh, they both go from something to somewhere else uh, with a typo in. Uh, so let me fix uh, let me fix that typo now. Uh, why not? Lecture 5. Dot, oh, geez. I can't switch my pinging off. Uh, UI. Uh, intersect uj it should say there u oops uj let's try that and there we go okay so typo is now fixed so what's going on here uh, we've got a map from product of i f of ui to product over i and j f of ui intersect uj intersection of two open sets is still open right uh, so f of ui intersect uj makes sense and there's a map uh, from f of ui to f of ui intersect uj, and there's also a map from f of uj uh, to f of ui intersect f of uj. So those two concepts, like use the first variable and use the second variable, um, give you two morphisms um, from, do you know what, it would be even better, uh, do you know uh, I think if I put j and k, I think that's e easy to understand. f of u j intersect f of u k. Uh, and another another piece of 
another catastrophe we had today was that uh, I was going to be using uh, my iPad to do this, but my iPad pencil stopped working. So anyway, uh, so there's two maps from product over I of F of UI to product over J and K of F of UJ intersect UK. One of them is uh, use the fact that UJ intersect UK is a subset of UJ. And the other one is use the fact that UJ intersect UK is a subset of UK. So that gives you two maps uh, here. And the idea is that the elements of this product, uh, which become equal under those two maps, uh, you know, an element of the product, you apply those two maps. If the answers you get are equal, uh, then it should be in the image of f of u. So that's what an equalizer is. So that's a that's a sort of a completely concrete, rigorous, sort of lowbrow way of explaining it. And then there are higher brow ways of explaining it. Um, you know, somehow the nice middle ground way is this way. Uh, the sheaf axiom says that to give an element of f of u is to give elements of f of u i for all i which agree on overlaps. Right. That's that's the sort of the, the that's explaining a nice mathematical picture, uh, which explains the you know the nonsense in the previous paragraph, and then even more vaguely, sometimes people describe sheaves as um, as pre sheaves. So the properties defining f can be checked locally, and this is slightly this is uh, I, I would say that actually this is you see this you see this in sort of heuristic explanations of what sheaves are. Uh, but I would say that actually that was um that was really a description of subsheaves. In fact, uh, this is this thing here is a is a description of a sheaf, and this thing here is actually a description of a subsheaf. Uh, properties defining f can be because the idea is you start with a sheaf, and then you want to define f as being the elements in that big sheaf uh, that have some nice property. And if that property is a local property, then that will give you a subsheaf. And the the canonical example when people are trying to explain what a sheaf is. Uh, the idea is that uh, they can say continuous real valued functions on a topological space. Uh, those are a sheaf because continuity is something that can be checked locally. But I would argue that what's actually happening here is that we're defining a subsheaf. Right? We've got the sheaf of all real valued functions on X, which is sort of trivially a sheaf. Um, and then the continuous ones are a subsheaf. So this, this stuff about being checked locally, I think that's really a definition of a subsheaf. Uh, and uh, here's a definition of a sheaf. A good definition of a sheaf is uh, elements which agree on overlaps. Uh, so that's what a pre-sheaf of sets is and a sheaf of sets. And then the next question is, so what's a, a pre-sheaf and a sheaf of abelian groups uh, or a pre-sheaf uh, or a sheaf of rings? It's just the same definition. You just replace all the sets with groups or with rings. Uh, that shouldn't have happened. Uh, and then... All we need, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At some point, you have to take arbitrary products, so you have to be careful with sheaves of topological spaces. Um, no, you don't. I mean, you have to be careful at some point. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, all you need is for the category to have arbitrary products. Then we can talk about sheaves. Uh, and so, what we're going to do today uh, is we're going to talk about what a sheaf of modules is over a sheaf of rings, because I haven't covered those yet, right? I've talked about like, sheaves of abelian groups and sheaves of rings, but the question is, what's so a sheaf? You need to have equalizers in the category, right? So, so not just product, yeah, but, you're right. You need but, so I probably need all limits. Well spotted. I probably need all an equalizer. Is that a limit? Um, an equalizer is a limit. Yes. Great. Yeah. So I probably need all limits. Uh, so there we go. I'll change arbitrary uh, arbit arbitrary. Uh, I'll change limits. There we go. Uh, there. So the question today is, what's a sheaf of modules over a sheaf of rings? And that's something we haven't talked about yet. Uh, <clears throat> and so the sheaf axiom, although I had to mention it because we're going to be using sheaves today, uh, the sheaf axiom is irrelevant. The real question we want to ask here uh, is, what's a pre-sheaf of modules uh, over a pre-sheaf of rings? So you know what a module is. Maybe I should sort of remind, do I remind you? Uh, no, I don't. Hard luck. So a reminder... Uh, a reminder that a module that you can you can ask lean what a module is over a ring, uh, so we, we should certainly import some. Have we got modules? Check module. No, we haven't got any modules. So let's import uh, import data dot module dot something. Is that a thing? Uh, it's probably not data module. Uh, let's put that there. Uh, oh, here we go. This looks good. Algebra dot module dot basic. That's what we want. 
algebra.module.basic and now module is a thing. So there we go and we could just, uh, so we need an R and an M, right? So variables uh, R type and M type, there we go. And then we want module RM, that's what we wanna do. That's the way of saying let M be an R module in lean. Uh, but we get an error uh, because uh, lean wants more information before it will let us let our let m be an r module first it says you're not allowed to let m be an r module if r if m if r isn't at least a semi ring and who knows what a semi ring is but let's make it a ring uh, ring r i think a semi ring is a ring but without negation or something and it still won't let us uh, make a module because it says that M has to be at least an additive commutative monoid. Uh, so let's just make it an add, uh, add com group because that's what we normally do in mathematics. And the fact that it happens to work. The, the point is that the axioms for a, mo for a module over a ring don't ever mention negation. So you don't strictly speaking need to assume uh, that this is an additive group. You can get away with an additive monoid. So there we go. Uh, for a module over a ring, it seems that a module over a ri uh, ring is you have to have a, a ring and an abelian group. Adcom group is just a silly way of saying abelian group with group law addition. Uh, and then a module is just something uh, where we can look at the axioms. Uh, it seems to be, uh, it's an action of the ring on the module and the action has to satisfy some axioms, which is just the axioms for, I guess, for a vector space over a, a field. Uh, so there you go, that's what a module is. Uh, so great, you, a module you need a ring and you need an abelian group and then you glue them together uh, in some way and you get a module. So now the question is how is that going to work um, in this sheafy world? So let's fix a topological space and a pre-sheaf of rings, so that's a ring attached to every open set. Uh, and then a pre-sheaf of modules uh, is going to be firstly a pre-sheaf of abelian groups uh, because that's going to be, so OX is our pre-sheaf of rings. We're going to have a pre-sheaf of abelian groups called M. And then we need some kind of sensible definition of what it means for the pre-sheaf of rings to act on the pre-sheaf of abelian groups. And in some sense, the first question that we'll have uh, is trying to figure out uh, exactly how... Uh, exactly how we're going to, you know, what, what the definition of that action is and how we're going to make that definition in lean. Uh, and then, of course, a sheaf of modules is just a pre-sheaf of modules, which is a sheaf of abelian groups, right? Because um, somehow the sheaf axiom only relies on the underlying sheaf of... Well, when you're in a situation, I should say, when you're in a situation where you have a concrete category which is reflecting limits or something... You've got to make sure that the limits in the category of modules are the same as limits in the category of sets. Um, you yeah, know, they commute with the limits in the category of sets. This, there's a functor that, given a module, sends, takes you to its underlying set. Uh, unfortunately, that functor is extremely nice. For example, products of modules, you just take products of the underlying set. Uh, so a sheaf of modules, we just don't have to worry about all the, this extra structure. We just say a sheaf of modules is a sheaf of abelian groups. Uh, with all this, uh, with this, with a sheaf, we need a sheaf of actions, basically. Uh, the, qu the question is, how are we going to make a sheaf of actions? Uh, and once we've decided how to make that sheaf of actions, we'll have a definition of sheaf of modules and we get a basic API. Uh, so there's the plan, uh, and we can, we can talk about what goes in the API later. I'm just going to start making it. Uh, so we've already got, Lean already has sheaves of rings and it already has sheaves of abelian groups, so we don't have to make any of those. We can just start uh, start with the modules. And the last part of these slides, I'm going to talk about the different ways that we can make sheaves of modules. So the first way is just do it the boring way. Uh, literally, take a sheaf of rings, we'll call it OX. Uh, take a sheaf of abelian groups, we'll call it M. And then we'll put OX module structures, uh, OXU module structures on M of U for all U. And then we'll have to figure out how they have to be compatible. Uh, and so, you know, we could do it, we could do it the low level way. And that's the way I'm going to do it, in fact. Uh, but there are these other ways that people are kind of keen on doing, uh, but nobody's got round to doing yet. Uh, and one way I think is a rather nice way, but has somehow a fatal flaw when it comes to formalising, uh, 
is the category of ring module pairs. And I've, I've never seen this category before uh, until I started formalising, basically. So, the, But maybe others of you have. The category of... I don't even know what it's called. I've just made up its name. So I've made up the name of a category. It's called the category of ring module pairs. Uh, and the objects of that category are a pair consisting of a ring R and a module M for, for that ring. So that's a ring module pair. Now I have to say what a morphism is. So a morphism of ring module pairs is a map between the rings and a map between the modules, and the maps have to be compatible in some way. Uh, so what does that mean? You've got a map between the rings from R to S, and so if you have that, then N, N the module for S, automatically becomes an R module, right? Because we know how R can act on N, because it can act via S. So after you've got the ring morphism, then N magically becomes an R module, and so you could ask, that the map from M to N is an R module homomorphism. So that's the category of ring module pairs. Uh, and so now we can talk about pre sheaves and sheaves of ring module pairs. Uh, and uh, there's a forgetful functor, right? From the category of ring module pairs to the category of rings where you forget the module. Uh, and so the, the problem, so this sounds like a really nice way of formalizing uh, sheaves of modules over a sheaf of rings but the problem is in practice you tend to be given the sheaf of rings right in practice x is a scheme and ox is the um is going to be the sheaf that comes free with that scheme right every scheme comes free with a sheaf of uh, rings attached to it called the structure sheaf uh, and so the problem with it so the problem with this setup is we want to do ox modules for that given sheaf of rings ox right and uh, this this will give us a sheaf. We'll be able to have a sheaf of ring module pairs, and given that, we'll be able to make a sheaf of rings by just forgetting, you know, applying the forgetful functor. But then we'll want to say that that sheaf of rings that we've created from this sheaf of ring module pairs uh, has got to equal uh, O x. And equality of types is problematic in type theory. Uh, so you can either say um, you can either say when you apply the forgetful functor you get a sheaf of rings which is equal to the sheaf of rings we started with and that's set, that sets up all sorts of warning signs. The, the problem is you're not, we're doing category theory, we're going to use the category theory library and you're not supposed to ever talk about objects of a category being equal, right? That's evil because statements you make about, you know, statements you make about groups should be invariant under isomorphism. But statements you make about categories uh, should be invariant under equivalence. And equality of objects is not, um, is not invariant under equivalence. So demanding that you have a sheaf of modules and then you apply this forgetful function, you get a sheaf of rings, and that should be equal to OX is evil, and I don't want to do evil things. So the other possibility is that you apply the forgetful function, you get a sheaf of rings, and then you say it's isomorphic to the sheaf OX. Uh, and so now we have to carry around an isomorphism and, ever we, and whenever we've got an element, you know, a section for the sheaf of rings and we wanted to act on the sheaf of modules, we're going to have to apply the isomorphism and that's just going to be annoying. Uh, and so that's why I don't want to do this definition here, even though it looks really nice. Uh, and the third possibility is that we can use module objects over monoid objects. Uh, uh, a question about definition two: Would this be easier in homotopy type theory? Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, probably it would be different in homotopy type. In homotopy type theory, you would just have a different collection of problems, right? In homotopy okay. type theory, the problem is you can't make a sheaf, you can't make a scheme, right? Because okay. b because there are issues, you can't make a scheme as a topological space. Uh, so, I in my mind, that's an open problem, right? Because nobody has ever, what you're about to see, okay, is breakthrough mathematics. You're about to see the first ever definition of anybody making a sheaf of modules over a sheaf of rings in any theorem prover. Okay, so the question, would it be easier in homotopy type theory? The answer is, you've got to find somebody in the homotopy type theory community that cares about sheaves of modules. And that's really difficult to do, because all the people in the homotopy type theory don't care about Groth and Dijk's algebraic geometry. They just care about, they care about different things. They, they care about doing much more basic mathematics with their higher types. You know, they care about things like proving the Schroeder-Bernstein theorem for higher types. So the answer to your question is, 
No, I don't know. And furthermore, nobody knows. Uh, and I think it's a very interesting, like, feel free for homework to go away and try and do it. Because I think somebody just made affine skin. I saw a talk on YouTube, like, just a few weeks ago, somebody announced that they'd made affine schemes uh, in, um, in Agda using the univalence axiom. They've made affine schemes, so they haven't made schemes yet. So if you can make the scheme in the sheaf of rings, uh, then we can do the experiment. Uh, but until then, nobody knows. So here's definition three. Uh, mon C is the... Uh, so if you have a monoidal category, which means a category where you have some kind of tensor product uh, and and it obeys some sensible axioms. Um, if you have a tensor product, if you basically have a product in your category, then you have enough to define monoids, right? Because you've got, you've got some object O, or, well, let's call it M. You have an object M, and then you've got, you can do M cross M, so you can write down a map from M cross M to M, or M tensor M to M. Um, and uh, then you've got the identity function from M to M, and you can you can write down the axioms for a monoid and get a category of monoid objects. And then once you've got a category of monoid objects, these mon just like a monoid can act on a set, right? Uh, you know, if you you've probably seen the definition of a group acting on a set, uh, but when you, if you think about it, the definition never uses inverse, and so it, it makes sense to talk about monoids acting on sets. Um, and so a module over a monoid object is just a, an object in the category that the monoid object is acting on. Uh, and if you do all this with the category of abelian sheaves, sheaves of abelian groups, then according to my PhD student, Jujian, uh, and I trust him, uh, apparently mon of it uh, is now the category of sheaves of rings. So you start with the category of sheaves of abelian groups, and then the monoidal objects in that category uh, are the sheaves of rings, because you know the monoid structure is the multiplication, right? You've got the addition from the sheaf of abelian groups, and the multiplication gives you the sheaf of rings. And then the mod of that uh, is the category of sheaves of modules, apparently. So this would be another very fancy way of doing it. And this might be the way that we end up doing it. Uh, but Jujian also said to me that even if we do end up doing it this way, like in MathLib, uh, he thinks that the simple way uh, will need to be done anyway. Uh, so that's the end of that, uh, and now I will switch, uh, let's switch to here, uh, and now let's make, uh, let's make uh, sheaves of modules. Uh, in, the, in the completely easy way, the way that I learned what a sheaf of module was uh, when I was a, uh, when I was a PhD student, when I was your age. Um, great, so where do we start? Uh, let's start with... Um, uh, let's start by making the categories uh, we're interested in. Uh, because I don't want to use universes, because I, whenever I lecture to mathematicians, I uh, avoid universes. Um, so we want uh, the category of ringed spaces. So let's import, uh, import algebraic geometry, uh, ringed space there. Let's spell import right. Uh, let's no, there we go, uh, and now let's put it there, and that has worked great. So now I think we should be able to define uh, abbreviation ringed space, uh, and that's going to be uh, ringed space dot zero. So there we go. So oh, that didn't work. Uh, that's a bit annoying. Oh, is it algebra? Is it in algebraic geometry or something? Uh, yeah, it's in algebraic geometry. So let's let's open algebraic geometry. There we go. So now that's the category of ringed spaces. And if we didn't do it like that, then it would be ringed spaces whose objects were in some universe and and whose morphisms were in some other universe or something like that. This is a. Uh, let me check ringed space. Uh, let me just check it's in. There you go. Yeah, it's good. It's in type one. Okay, so stuff in type is sets. So this is not a set, right? So this is a category. This is a large category. Okay, it's in it's in type one, which means that the uh, it means it doesn't have a so right. It, this means this means it doesn't have a set of objects. Uh, 
it, it has a class of objects, right? If you've been brought up doing set theory, uh, then as far as you're concerned, it's a class of objects. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a topological space uh, plus a sheaf of rings. There, uh, but all all hom sets are sets, right? There, that's what's that's how I know that's how I know that this is a large. So this is type one. Uh, type one. So that's what we've so we've just made a large category. And what other large categories are we going to use? I guess we're also going to use um, uh, the category of topological spaces. Uh, top. Uh, that can be top dot zero, I guess. And um, abbreviation. Uh, we'll also use ab because we're going to do sheaves of abelian groups. So this is ab dot zero. There. So, and check, let me just check. Top is also got type, type one and ab. Okay, great. So these are all, so there we go. Top and ab are also large categories. There. So objects don't form. So, yeah, the category of abelian groups. Uh, so now what? Um, I guess now we need to do some practice. So let's do some practice. So section examples uh, uh, and examples. So now, so now let's try and figure out. So let let X be a topological space uh, equipped uh, with a sheaf of rings. Uh, so that would be variable uh, X, and that would be ring space. So there we go. Great. So that is type. That's type checked. Uh, so it has worked. Uh, so let uh, let U be an open subset. Uh, uh, set of x and do you know what I'm going to variable u uh, how does this work this would be um, it's going to be in the opens of x but you see x is not oh it's never heard of opens that's a blow do I need oh, top dot opens maybe I need uh, 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 uh. Maybe I'll open topological space. Is that a thing? Now oh, that's worked. Great. So it's it's topological space dot opens. Okay, great. Um, but the thing is, I don't really want to do. I want to coerce. I think to, uh, let's do top. So I've got X considered as a ringed space, but I'm going to explicitly, I think, coerce uh, X to a topological space. So the idea is. Because that that's worked, you see. So there is a uh, there is there is a coercion uh, from the category of ring space. Well, you I mean you people probably call it a forgetful functor uh, from the category of topological spaces. No, 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 category of ring spaces to the category of topological spaces. So check uh, x colon top. So that should work. Uh, oh, it, ah, because I forgot the capitals. There. There we go. And you see there's a little arrow there. Uh, that arrow means, you see, you get, you get this. There. Right, so the arrow means, uh, the up arrow means I just, means I just applied, uh, I just applied a map which mathematicians uh, don't usually mention, uh, and in this case, it was the it was the forgetful functor from the category of ring spaces to the category of topological spaces. Uh, let you be an open subset of X, and um, I don't really. So there's a problem. Like, there, there's a problem. <laughs> let's let, so okay. Let's. Uh, I'll show you what the problem is. Let's uh, let's try and um, uh, let's try and get uh, the ring. Uh, Let's try and get the ring uh, OXU uh, associated to U, right? Because we've started with a ring space, and a ring space is just by definition a topological space and a sheaf of rings. So the first thing is how are we going to get this thing to work, okay? And uh, so I guess we should do uh, X has got type ring space. Let's have a look at the dev. Let's have a look. How does this work? Ring space is sheaved space com ring, and sheaved space extends pre-sheaved space. 
and pre-sheaf space has a carrier has a pre-sheaf. Okay, it has a pre-sheaf. Uh, so maybe we can do. Oh, I've lost my place. Uh, here we are. Uh, maybe we can do x dot pre-sheaf. Let's try that. Uh, check x dot pre-sheaf. Oh, it's oh, it's worked. Great. Uh, x dot pre-sheaf has worked. And what's the type of it? Uh, this thing is it is a sheaf of commutative rings uh, on some underlying space. Okay, great. And so now, if that's a if that's a pre so what's a pre sheaf, right? A pre sheaf is just a contravariant functor. Uh, so what is a you see? There we go. So there is the pre sheaf. There's the definition of a pre sheaf on a topological space, and do you see that we don't have contravariant functors, right? Lean doesn't have contravariant functors. Lean will deal with contravariant functors by, this is, this is the notation for a covariant functor. So the definition of a pre-sheaf on a topological space uh, is it is a covariant functor from the opposite category uh, to the category of open sets uh, to C. And so if we try... Uh, so how do functors work? Let's go and see how functors work. Uh, a functor which sends a pre-functor. Okay, so a pre-functor. The way functors work is they have object, they have, they have obj, and they have map. Uh, and so that's the what is a functor? Uh, a functor is something that sends objects to objects and morphisms to morphisms. So we have obj, and they're called obj and map in Lean apparently. Uh, so let's go back to our sheaves of modules. We can probably close. Let's close a bunch of this stuff. Uh, there we go. Now, what's that? Furthermore, why does it say I've edited it? That's not good. Uh, let me just check that I didn't just break MathLib. Yeah, OK. I did not edit that file. Um, so x dot pre -sheaf dot obj. There, there we go. X dot pre sheaf dot obj wants to eat an open set and it's going to spit out a commutative ring. So we can try and feed in u and then it doesn't work, right? Because of this stupid issue about u has got, u is, a, uh, it doesn't want u, it doesn't want an element of this category, it wants an element of the opposite category. So let's do, let's make u an element of the opposite category and now it works. And now we get a commutative ring, you see. Uh, it's going to be, it's, the answer is com ring there. So all our open sets are not going to be, you see, at maths we just say, let u be an open subset of x, right? Because x is a ring space, so x is a topological space as well. And, uh, and you know, the, every category is kind of equal to its opposite category because the objects are just the same. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, you know, lean, unfortunately, uh, we have to spell all this stuff out. So u is an element uh, is an object in this category here, uh, and we seem to be able to, and we seem to be able to. So I think we want notation for this, right? Notation. Uh, let's um, uh, let's do O of uh, x uh, can be the function that takes u takes one of these uh, there and returns. You see, because it's such a mouthful, and returns. I might pay for this, I'm not really sure. There we go. There, so let me see if I can get that notation working. So now let's check uh, O, X, U. That has failed. Oh, oh, that's a bit annoying. Let's try that. Oh, that's worked, great. Okay, so there's, uh, so now we can use, so now we can use uh, notation, uh, notation, uh, o x uh, for the function which eats uh, eats uh, um, an open I mean strictly speaking an open set with reservations and uh, spits out a commutative ring uh, uh, and let me just check that it knows it's a commutative ring so instance uh, com ring that thing there and 
the proof, oh, Kelm ring. So this is a test to see if Lean knows it's a commutative ring and um, infer instance. Uh, that's work. No, it's, yes, it's worked fine. So, uh, so we could do example. There. Uh, so great. So we've got ring spaces working. Uh, and now what would be the next thing to do? I guess we should work out how the morphisms work. So let's have another, let's have V as well. Uh, variables U and V. And now let's have I uh, from, how is this going to work? Uh, a map from U to V. So that says, uh, that says V is a subset of U, right? Because we're, we're in the opposite category. Uh, so we've got I from U to V, and so now what I want to see is how to get the ring homomorphism. Uh, so example, I want uh, uh, O, X of O, X of U. I want a ring homomorphism to uh, O, X of V. Because that's the v is a subset of u, so there's a restriction map, and this should be x dot pre sheaf dot map. Uh, and now, what does map want? This looks good to me. It wants it wants to know the morphism in the category of uh, in the source category. So that's probably i. Ah, oh, there we go. That's worked perfectly. So there we go. That's the restriction homomorphism. So, so this says OXU, uh, OXU uh, is a commutative ring. Uh, the restriction homomorphism, homomorphism coming from uh, the inclusion uh, I, which is uh, the proof that V is a subset of U. There we go. Uh, do we need any more examples? I suspect not. Um, okay, so maybe then uh, we are, I'm just looking through my notes. I think maybe we're ready to go. Um, we've opened algebra geometry and topological space. So that's the end of our examples. So great, let's make it. So structure, sheaf of modules. Uh, I'm gonna put it in capital letters just to remind you all that it's a category. Uh, and it's X, which is a ring space. Uh, and so now, so now we need to write down the definition. Uh, so first of all, we'll need a sheaf of abelian groups. So, so what is a sheaf of modules? Uh, or a ring space. Uh, so firstly, we'll need, firstly, we'll need um, a sheaf of abelian groups. Uh, so that could be called ab sheaf, I guess. Uh, and that is what top dot sheaf, that is a sheaf. No, it's never heard of top dot. Let's do let's try top dot sheaf. Top dot sheaf uh, ab x. How about that? Oh, oh, I've got issues with. I've got issues with universes. Uh, right, let me fix that. Uh, so def top dot sheaf colon equals top dot sheaf zero. There. Uh, and now can I do, now I can do top dot sheaf probably. Uh, has that worked? Yes. So what have I just done here? Well, we can find out uh, top dot sheaf zero. There we go. It's a uh, top dot sheaf eats a category and then a, it eats a category and an object in the category of topological spaces um, and it returns the type of uh, sheaves of, yeah, it turns the type of sheaves of objects uh, taking values in that category. And interestingly enough, it doesn't need, um, it doesn't need limits, which is kind of interesting. So they must have some other definition that doesn't need limits. Um, so there we go. So first we we'll need a sheaf of abelian groups. And secondly, uh, uh, we need an action of the sheaf of rings uh, on the sheaf of abelian groups, right? So how would that work? Um, so like module structure, uh, uh, that would be uh, for all U, 
uh, for all u, which is one of these things here, uh, for all u, uh, u, that thing there, uh, comma, comma, something. And that, what is that something? We are going to need, uh, we're going to need the structure of a module, uh, module for what ring? Uh, o, X, U, that should be the ring. And then we need the module, so that's going to be ab sheaf. That's the sheaf, so how does this work? Uh, that's the sheaf. And so how do you get the pre sheaf? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's sheaf. It's val. Val is the pre sheaf. Uh, so it's. It's ab sheaf dot val. Uh, this needs to go in brackets, and then we evaluate that. That's the fu so that's the functor, and then we want to evaluate the functor on objects, and then feed in the object u. There we go. Great. Uh, so this says that says uh, uh, ab sheaf u. Uh, is a module for OXU for all U. There. I mean, is you know, has the structure of a module for OXU. Right. And now the question is: Is that the definition of a sheaf of modules? Who actually knows the definition of a sheaf of modules? I can stop recording if you like, and then we could just have a discussion. Uh, you need. I don't know how to pause it. That's interesting. Or have I paused it? There we go. There we go. I can pause it. Yeah, I'm going to need some compatibility because these are o, ox is a functor, uh, and ab sheaf dot val is a functor, right? That's the, uh, and so all we've done so far is says we've got a functor. Uh, let's say what it does on objects. So what do you think? Yeah. So what have we got left? I mean. I should. I, uh, just if I had my Apple pencil. Yeah, go on. Uh, like the restriction morphisms should be linear maps. Yeah, but the restriction morphisms. So it's the same. It's the same. It's the same as the thing in my ring module category, isn't it? So right now we've got we've got OX. Uh, that's a that's um that's a functor. Uh, so it eats objects U and it eats morphisms uh, morphisms like I. And then, I mean, we're not, you know, it's, I want to call it M. I mean, unfortunately, it's called ab sheaf, uh, right? So it should be really called M. Uh, and that's also a functor. Uh, so it eats, eats the same thing. It eats U and I. There. And what we have so far, uh, relationship uh, between uh, OX of U uh, and M of U. So what we're going to need, it seems to me, we, what, we, what we're going to need... Uh, what we need is a relationship uh, between uh, OX of I and M of I, right? Where where I goes from U to V, because we we somehow haven't used those before. This is a this is a really weird game. Okay, this is this is a game that I'm still getting the hang of, and the game is called uh, the game is called Guess the Morphisms, and the way it works is uh, your lecturer defines a category. Uh, and they do it by telling you what the objects are, and then they say of the morphisms, uh, the morphisms are the obvious thing, and uh, or, or you know something like that, sort of missing missing information. Uh, and so, for an exa for example, uh, if you try the category of topological spaces, like I'll tell you what the definition of a topological space is, uh, but then you have to guess. Uh, but then you have to guess what the morphisms are, right? That's the problem. Uh, and if you'd only if you'd only ever seen the definition of a topological space before, you'd never seen the definition of a continuous function. Uh, you would say, uh, well, the idea is that somehow we have all these special subsets, uh, and so f has got to be compatible with these special subsets. So I conjecture that the definition uh, of a morphism in the category of topological spaces is like the image of an open set has to be open. Because that's what 
you know, like the image of plus, that's the definition of a group homomorphism, right? The image of plus is plus and the image of zero is zero. Uh, so what I'm saying is that I don't really understand sort of how to play that game. And similarly here, uh, I want, I, want, I want this to be an obvious definition. And at the minute, you know, I want this definition to be somehow the, you know, I'm making a definition so I can choose what I like, but I want it to be the quotes correct definition. Uh, and I think to make it the quotes correct definition, uh, you know, this is a clue that we're not there yet. So, OK, I'm going to go with the things that the audience have suggested. Uh, so how does this work? Uh, oh, we'll just hang on a sec. Uh, how does this work? So this is some sort of compatibility. Did you resume the recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, I did. Good. Thanks for asking. Uh, for all, uh, for all U and V in that horrible thing, uh, for all U, and v, yeah, I need a, I need that, right? That's exactly what I need. Uh, for all those things there. Uh, oh, and I probably also need um, an element M, right? Uh, in abshief, uh, abshief, uh, dot val dot obj U. Uh, I'll put a close bracket there and I'll remove this comma there. Uh, so now what's this going to be? Uh, I want to say, uh, want to say that, oh, and I also need an R, right? I also need uh, R uh, in uh, OX of U there. So now the point is I can push, I can do R, aha, I can do, uh, I can do R dot, does, does that work? Does that work? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Uh, so that's not the correct axiom. I was just checking the R dot M. So R dot M, that's an element of abshief, uh, abshief of U. And so now I can apply the, so what is it? Is abshief uh, dot val. Uh, that is the pre sheaf, and I need to eat, uh, and I need to eat i. So that should be. No, oh, curse! It's what have I done? Abshief dot val dot map term r has type. Uh, oh. Bingo! Ah, oh, great. So this is. This is the more, so that is not supposed to be zero. It's supposed to be abshief, uh, no, ox, right? It's supposed to be uh, x dot pre sheaf, right? x dot pre sheaf dot map. Um, and then that I feed that i and then I feed that r. And that is an element of the ring. Uh, that's now an element of ox of v. Uh, and so that object there needs to act on uh, this thing here, but with just M. Uh, I'm going to put M, and then I'm going to close the bracket and see if it compiles. And it does compile, uh, which is a good start. So, okay, so I think that that's... Uh, uh, so this says... Uh, this says... Uh, oh, wait, the, the spacing is wrong. I think the spacing should be like this. Uh, this says that uh, the module structure is compatible uh, with the restriction morphisms. Uh, there we go. Uh, on our on whatever ox on ox on ox uh, and on m uh, here. Yeah, m is unfortunately called something stupid called abshift. Uh, right, so there's sheaf of modules. Um, so that's it. That's the end of the lecture. So what are we going to do? Well, now we have to decide what to do, right? So now, uh, what now? Uh, so uh, we could... Uh, I'll tell you what we could do. We could, um, uh, we could make them um, make sheaves of modules... Uh, 
We can make tubes of modules into uh, an, I don't know, a billion category, right? There, we could define uh, push forward uh, and pull back of sheaves of modules. Uh, and we could, I don't know, we could define, we could define tens of products of sheaves of modules. Right, everything needs doing, right? Everything needs doing. Uh, uh, because nobody has ever, and uh, nobody ever did this before. There we go. Nobody ever did this before. Uh, unless, unless one of my PhD students just did it as an experiment. Uh, but I don't think there's any published papers about this stuff. Uh, so let's, let's do, I mean, I think before we make it into a Boolean category, let's, um, let's make a category, right? Uh, sheaves of, sheaves of modules, uh, of modules are a category. So where should we, so we should be working in the right namespace. So namespace sheave, uh, what did I call it? Sheaf of modules. Great. Uh, end sheaf of modules. So here we are. Uh, and so what do we have? We have the objects uh, and we have to find, oh great, so now we've got to do the uh, now we've got to do the exercise again. So let's do, okay, structure, uh, HOM. This is going to be the morphisms. So let's have M and N. Uh, these are going to be sheaf of modules uh, on a X. Unknown identifier X. I thought we had a variable X. Variable, ah, oh, it was only in the examples. Uh, okay, so here we are here. So let's have variable uh, let's have x uh, ring space there, and I'll put it in squiggly brackets, right? Um, because uh, m and n are going to be have type sheaf of modules x, and so Lean is going to be able to guess what x is from m and n. Uh, so now this is going to be, uh, and this is going to be a type. So I could say, you know, just check it's a set, right? Uh, and colon equals. So what is an example? Uh, yeah, so what is the definition of a morphism of sheaves of modules? Well, we probably already have a notion of morphism of sheaves of abelian groups. Probably. Yes, and the first thing is we'll need, so ab sheaf, uh, that would be, I could probably just use the category. So, so M is now got type sheaf of modules, but so M is, you know, M is a bunch of data, and we want to get the abelian sheaf out, and it's called m.absheaf, that's what I've called it. Uh, so, and then this is category theory HOM uh, to, let's see if this works. Uh, that has not worked. Uh, oh, because I didn't, oh, because it doesn't know, oh, this is so annoying. Uh, this is because, uh, something is missing a category instance, right? Uh, 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 where was my... Oh, maybe I can do this. Uh, this is just because I'm trying to be silly. I'm trying to be clever. Uh, let's make unknown identifier category. So let's maybe open category theory. Okay, now I think that error has gone away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... One issue with lean is whenever you make a new def lean won't unfold definitions unless you ask it to, right? If you like, if you've got, if you're doing some maths question, it's got the number thirty-seven in, uh, and lean's like, oh, thirty-seven. I know the definition of that. It's suck of 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 thirty-seven times of suck of zero. So maybe it would be unhelpful to expand that thirty-seven out. Uh, do, do you see what a lousy idea it would be? Uh, if Lean expanded everything out by def you know, automatically. Uh, so what was happening here is that M, uh, this, this had got type, uh, M.absheaf has got type top sheaf with this capital letter. I'm just making up these. Uh, it, di it didn't know why this was a category. That was the issue. Uh, because I defined top sheaf with all capital letters to be top sheaf, uh, to be there. Top. It knows that this thing here is a category. Uh, but because I put this definition on top of it, I should make maybe can I make it reducible? Uh, 
with that. Uh, there. Maybe it should be reducible. Let's see if that works. Uh, and now, actually, maybe I didn't need to derive the category structure. Uh, let me try. If I remove that, do we get the error back? Oh, the error's gone. Great. Uh, so, any, back to the point. Yes, we certainly need, it certainly should be a morphism. Of, so there we go. So this is a morphism uh, of underlying, uh, of underlying sheaf, uh, sheaf of abelian groups. And now what? Uh, now for every open set U, the map should be like linear, like, like we can evaluate the map at every open set U. Yes, the map should be linear. So we have to decide how to say that. Um, the map has to be linear. Like this morphism between the sheets of abelian groups is like a natural transformation between two functors. So it has components for every object. Yes, as components for every object. Uh, so we want this to be. Uh, um, 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 what do I call this? I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. So I should maybe call this. Uh, Linearity? Well, okay, let me. Uh, I, okay, I'll just call it. I'm not too worried about names at the minute. And so this should say for all. Uh, U, and this is in opens, this is a stupid category, opens X colon top, colon top, op. Uh, for all U in X colon top, op, and it doesn't, it's never heard of that. Uh, oh, is it, I put the brackets in the wrong, the, there, it won't op top, it will only op opens. Uh, for all U, uh, and for all, and we also need for all R uh, in. Uh, the, the question is how are we going to say how are we going to say linearity? What do we know already? I think it's just O X U linearity in this case, and I don't even think we need to take a single object. Like O X U is a ring. Yes, O X U is a ring. Have, and and for that ring we have this is already R. a morphism of abelian groups. So is it enough to say? Um, is it enough to say R acting on what is this again? Ab sheaf uh, dot val dot app. Uh, what do we need? Uh, 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 U of I need an M. I need an M, uh, and that's going to be in. Uh, can I put, uh, what is, the, oh, this is ridiculous, m dot, what is this called? Absheaf dot val dot obj. I don't want to keep writing that. That is literally, mathematicians would write that as m of u, right? Uh, so we could maybe cheat. What about, what about if I do this, def obj? Uh, so let's take a uh, sheaf of modules of uh, x. Oh, we haven't got x yet. Uh, let's put it here. Let me define obj, and then let's have u, the usual thing, this ridiculous thing here. Uh, I want to, uh, and it will be an abelian group, and it will be that thing there. There. How about that? And now, so now you see, now I can use dot notation, right? There. There we go. So let me let me just let me just put. Let me comment this out for. Let me comment this out and just put zero equals zero. See if it's work. okay. So that works. Uh, and what's just happened here is I got sick of typing m dot. At, I got sick of typing that. Right. M is the sheaf of modules. M dot app sheep. Ab sheaf is the underlying sheaf of abelian groups. M dot ab sheaf dot val is the underlying pre sheaf of abelian groups, which is a functor, and uh, and the functor can and the functor is two components, right? So a functor is two things. It's a map on objects and a map on morphisms, and this obj is the map on objects. Um, and so I've just made a new definition. Uh, 
So sheaf of modules dot opt, right? That's what that's called. It's in the namespace sheaf of modules. So it's called sheaf of modules dot opt. And, uh, and this, is, this is dot notation, right? This curly M has got type sheaf of modules something. So M dot obj means sheaf of modules dot obj M. And sheaf of modules dot obj M is exactly you know, what we expect there. Uh, so we've got for all R and M, and now I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say what? I'm gonna say uh, ab sheaf, oh, I still don't have good notation for this. Ab sheaf dot, uh, val dot app u uh, that is a that is the abelian group homomorphism and if we apply it to uh, our bub m uh, and that should equal our bub uh, ab sheaf dot val dot app u Uh, M in brackets and this has not worked annoyingly uh, why has that not worked R is in OX of U and this should be I think maybe uh, uh, sorry I've got two computers on the go I think maybe let's tell it that n dot obj uh, u uh, 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 fail to synthesize. Oh, I've got two. That's not good. Why have I got two ringed? Why have I got two ring spaces called x? Uh, let's not worry about that yet. Fail to synthesize type classes has small yada yada yada. Uh, hmm. Is it the issue, should I have not made this a def? Should this be, should this be reducible or something? Uh, and it has still not worked. Uh, maybe I will try, let's try it this. Oh. That has worked. Okay, nice. Yeah, so Lean is being slightly autistic about uh, Obj U. Uh, now it doesn't like, still doesn't like something. Uh, oh, come on, Lean. Hashmo. Oh, come on. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So let's just... Oh, I know what's going... I know what's going wrong. I've never... I've never... No, I know what's going wrong. Uh, I need to make this... Oh, okay. I know what to do. Uh, let's... Let's... We've... Let's make this explicitly... We've never explicitly said it's a, it's a module. So instance, uh, so what have we got here? We'll have M a sheaf of modules. We'll have those things there, there. Uh, and I, I'm gonna make a module structure. Um, it's module structure for O, X, uh, X, U. This is gonna be a module. I've, you see, I've defined this, ob I don't think Lean is unfolding this obj, so now, M uh, dot obj u there. And how is this a module? This is a module because we made, it's this thing here. Uh, it's gonna be, so the name of that field, and I'll talk you through this again. The name of that field is module structure, but the structure itself is sheaf of modules, right? So the full name of this thing here is check sheaf of modules, uh, dot module structure, right? That should be, that should work. There we go. So that's the name of this thing here. Uh, but this is a function and the first input it wants 
uh, is a sheaf of modules. Uh, so it wants some M. Uh, and the idea is we're going to use dot notation uh, uh, to save us having to write down sheaf of modules. So this is going to be M, M dot module structure. Uh, and now this still hasn't worked because M dot module structure wants to E to U. So if I give it U, that has now worked. Ah, oh, this is now compiling. Excellent. Um, so the question I have now for the audience is have I, so this should be called map smart, I think. Uh, is that all I need for our linearity? I think so. Because we know that R acts by abelian group homomorphisms. Yeah, yeah we know that this is, we, we know that this is a module action. And we know, so we know that R dot A plus B is R dot A plus R dot B, things like this. And this, so I, I think that's it. So I think that's the definition of morphism uh, of modules. Okay, so now, great. So now we have the objects and we have the morphisms. So let's make a category. Uh, and you can, we can do this quickly or slowly. Uh, we could maybe, uh, we could do, we could go into namespace hom. Let's just do it slowly, end hom. Uh, and what we can do in here is we can, uh, let's, um, let's set up the notation, right? Let's set up the notational class, the notational type class. Uh, for HOM, uh, and that's called a quiver. So instance quiver uh, sheaf of modules X, uh, and it is going to be, how do you make a quiver? Generate a skeleton. We have to say what the HOMs are. And what's the type of this? You have to give two, so two sheaves of modules there, and now it wants, it says, I want a type. Uh, I want a set, and it's going to be HOM uh, MN. Uh, got it. There. That has compiled, and so I should be able to do now. Uh, so let's have let's have variables uh, M and N. Uh, I've got type sheaf of modules X, and now I should be able to check uh, HOM M. There we go, that makes sense. So that's not the normal arrow sign, right? That's, sla that's the category theory arrow. It's quite difficult to see. Like if I hover over, yeah, that's a category theory arrow as well. Have I got any arrows that aren't category theory arrows? That's a category theory arrow. Uh, yeah, we haven't had a single function. Uh, but all, all of these arrows are category theory arrows, so watch it. Uh, and the reason that category theory arrows are working on chief of modules suddenly uh, is because I made I made them into a quiver, and a quiver is something that holds a lot of arrows. Uh, so now what? Uh, I guess I mean while we're here, I mean let's try something easy. Uh, we could make I mean I don't we're clearly not going to make it into an abelian category because there's a whole bunch of axioms, most of which I don't know, uh, but I could easily look up. But um, while we're here, why don't we just test what we have? Let's see if we can just make the zero, uh, zero morphism between uh, between between sheaves of modules. Um, so instance uh, has zero uh, m to uh, n. Let's put those variables up here. There and colon equals. So how do we make a zero object? And all we have to do is we have to say what the zero element of there. So this, so we need to make a term of this type, right? That's what this, that's what this goal always, that's what that weird little sideways T means. That sideways T means everything above it is our hypotheses. And I want you to make me a term of that type. And normally that type is sort of the statement of a theorem. And so it's saying, I want you to make me a proof of that theorem statement. Uh, but here we have M to N, and so that is by definition HOM, 
So we might be able to do this with that. Yeah, that's great. Great. Uh, so first of all, we have to define the map on abelian sheaves. Uh, and I'm hoping that I'm going to put zero. And that has worked. That's, that's good news. Um, so that means that somebody has already defined the zero morphism. So there's a theory of abelian sheaves. Sheaves of abelian groups has already been set up, basically, is what that's telling us. Uh, and now we've got to prove a theorem. OK, so here's first first theorem of the stream. So intros uh, U uh, and R uh, and M. And there we go. We've got to prove that zero. We've got to prove that zero equals the zero map when I mean, I suspect that this says we've got to prove that zero equals R dot zero. I, my instinct is to use the simplifier, right? Because there's lots of zeros and the simplifier, oh, curses. Uh, that's a blow. Uh, why didn't the simplifier do anything? Uh, so it would be, maybe it doesn't know. Maybe we need to train the simplifier. Uh, this happened to me in warm up and I worked out there. That's right. So. This, I think this should work. Uh, so we are missing. We are missing uh, a lemma. So this should be elsewhere, right? Uh, this should be elsewhere. There. So this is um, namespace category theory uh, dot sheaf dot hom. There. And I think what we're missing simp lemma. At least I couldn't find it. Lemma zero app. Uh, so C, uh, I'll just do this sort of in the proper lean way. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it for all universes. And then I need a Grothendieck topology. Uh, do you have a Grothendieck topology for me, lean? Uh, yes, you do. Uh, oh, I need to open open category theory. There. Uh, J Grothendieck topology on C, and then A is a category as well. Uh, category A, and I'll probably need some more things. And then uh, P and Q are going to be sheaves uh, for the Grothendieck topology. Uh, and let's have U in C op. Uh, and the claim is that zero uh, from P to Q. Uh, if I do, if I take val of that, uh, and that equals the zero, and it's going to be zero from p dot val to uh, q dot val, uh, and it doesn't like something. Uh, it can't find zeros. Oh, I probably need. Oh, I probably need. A has to be additive or something. Pre-additive. A. Okay, that's worked. Uh, so begin. So let's see if the simplifier proves this. Yeah, the simplifier doesn't prove that. Um, but let's see if Raffle does it. Yeah. So it's true by definition. Uh, invalid simplification lemma. Why is that an invalid simplification lemma? I'm slightly confused by that because the I I think add app is there, right? And is add app a simplification lemma? See that so that's there. Oh, it's got app. Oh, okay. Let me oh, all right, all right, all right. Let me go a bit further then. Um uh let's do val dot app uh is is now so now what and so now this is the morphism on the objects or something. Is that a valid simplification lemma? Why is that an invalid? I don't understand. Uh, what does invalid simplification lemma mean? Oh, is, oh, is it I mean, N? And it's not, is it the name? 
Invalid simplification then. Since when was that a thing? Uh, and I don't know why that's happening. But any, okay, well, if we're not allowed to have it as a simp lemma, we'll have it as a lemma. Um, we'll have it as a lemma, and then we will, that's the thing that we're missing anyway. Uh, so we can rewrite, oh, let's try simp this. Uh, oh, what the? I'm being punished. What is the zero app? What does it say? What have I done? It says that something equals something. That's a perfect simple error. Uh, Maybe it tries to apply it infinitely many times in a loop because you have like the zero also on the right hand side and then it tries to write that again, but I'm not sure. So what, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to commute this. I want this thing, I want that thing there to actually be the zero ring homomorphism. Or sorry, the zero abelian group homomorphism. I mean, I can, ch I can change uh, sort of zero from uh, m dot obj u uh, to, uh, and I could just make this there, uh, n dot obj u. Uh, of something equals something. You see, that's that's worked. Uh, and then I could also do the same thing, right? Is r bub uh, zero from m dot obj dot obj u to n dot obj uh, n dot obj u uh, of something. Has that worked? There. You see, so that's what the goal is, right? Because this this zero, this is some crazy zero defined when they were making abelian sheaves uh, into an abelian category. But the definition is simply it's the zero ring homomorphism. So I can use the change tactic, which changes things to their definitions. And now this, the simplifier should do this. There. So how did the simplifier do it? So that's a bit annoying. Uh, so there we go. Add com group dot zero apply and small zeros apparently. Uh, so there's a zero, uh, but there's so there's something that I need to. So I will you know ask. I now have to go and ask on Zulip why this doesn't work. Um, there. Why can't I make this? I make this a simple. <coughs> uh, Right. Is that all we need for... Well, I mean, I guess I've just convinced myself that the thing is working. Uh, what have I got in my notes? Oh, it says I should make comp. Yeah, I suppose I should make comp. Uh, <laughs> so let's make comp. We do need, we do need comp. So def comp. Uh, and so now we'll have M, N and P, all chief of modules on x uh, because and so now we'll have phi from uh, m to n and psi uh, from n to p uh, and i want a map from m to p uh, yeah that would be a good thing and if we're going to make it a category then we're going to need comp right uh, and that is so again how do you make how do we how do we make this definition? Uh, we've got to make a term of type m arrows p, and that arrows is notation. Here is where we set up the notation. It's notation for hom mp. So we've got to make a term of type hom mp, and hom is defined as a structure. Uh, and so we can click on the light bulb and click on generate a skeleton for the structure. And there we go. We've got to make a morphism of abelian sheaves. Uh, and so presumably that is phi dot ab sheaf. That's the morphism of abelian sheaves from M to N. Uh, and then we'll compose psi dot ab sheaf there. Because that notation there is uh, how you compose uh, morphisms. I mean, eventually this comp note, this, 
once, once we've got this comp up and running, we'll be able to use this notation for this comp. Uh, but for abelian sheaves, everything is already up and running. And now we have to prove a theorem. Uh, so begin, end. What do we have to prove? Uh, so intros. So we have U and we have R and we have M. And we have to prove... Uh, so yeah, we have to we have to prove that does this, will the simplifier do this? So the, we have to prove that the map, this composed map, uh, is commutes with the action of R. Uh, and what would be nice to know? Yeah, so we can do this with rewrites, right? So we could we could try simp, uh, we could try simp, phi dot map small and psi dot map small because those are the two ingredients, right? I should say, look, why won't the simplifier do it by itself? It's sort of clear the simplifier won't do it by itself. Uh, it's going to, there we go. So it's done something, right? It said, oh, yeah, yeah, what's the simplifier done? It says, I've got this weird category theory composition, but actually I know what to do. Uh, I can just, composition of, it's just literally phi of r dot. I've got to prove that if I start with r dot m and then do phi and then do psi, it's the same as starting with M, doing phi, and then psi, and then dotting with R. So you see, the thing that Lean doesn't know, the thing the simplifier doesn't know, uh, is that you see phi, phi and psi are morphisms of sheaves of modules. So phi and psi have got this map small field that we just made here, right? And that's obviously the thing we need, right? Phi dot map small. You see, if we simp first, and then we could, we could squeeze it, if you like. We could squeeze simp. Uh, and to see to see exactly what it's used to get this far. I'm regretting doing it now because squeeze him takes a long time. Uh, there we go. So there's all the exciting things that it used. Uh, and now and now you see that that's much quicker. And so now we need to rewrite uh, we need to rewrite phi dot map small. There. And now do you see it's moved? Do you see what just happened? It moved the dot from there to there. Uh, and now we need to re rewrite psi dot map small, and that's moved the dot to the outside, and then the goal became refl. Uh, but there's no reason that the simplifier can't do all that for us, uh, so we can just we can just tell the simplifier to use all the things it used already, and then all this stuff as well. There. And now that yeah, so that solves the goal completely. Uh, so that's how we do composite of morphisms. And now are we ready? Uh, are we ready to make this thing a category? So let's go. Uh, instance, uh, large category. Uh, sheaf of modules X. It's a large category because... Uh, uh, because... Why is this a large category? Um, because it's in capital letters. <laughs> that's why. Uh, and we have an error. It says, oh, does it say, I've never heard of large category? Have I not got, do you know about the where command? It where tells you, uh, category dot shift. Category theory is open. Have I not got it imported? What's this? Why have I not got large category? Uh, no suggestions. Uh, what gives me a large category? What, what, what are my imports? Ring space. Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's just search for it. Large category. It's definitely in there somewhere. Oh, there it was. It's in... Oh. Oh, here we go. Uh, so large categories do exist. I'm not going crazy. Uh, and here is an example of one in MathLib. And it's defined in... Uh, it's defined there. So I need category. How can I not have that imported? How can I not have category theory, category basic imported at this point? So what have I done? So I've done something wrong, but it's not the import. Large category. Uh, have I just, oh, I spelt sheaf of modules wrong or something. Uh, you, you you, you missed the colon after the instance. Thank you. Wonderful. 
Thank you, Jujiam. Uh, so how do I make a large category? Uh, we've got to do all, so there you go, a large category, we've got to fill in all the fields. So home, um, home we've done, uh, it's just going to be lambda, we can probably just write home, yeah that's worked. Uh, so now we need to say what the identity is, lambda u comma underscore. I should have done that, shouldn't I? We should make id here. Uh, we did has zero comp, let's do id, uh, def, def id. Uh, and that's M uh, sheaf of modules uh, of modules. There's my sheaf of modules. There it is, X. Uh, and this is a map from M uh, to M. And it is going to be, this should be easy. Uh, boom, boom. The abelian sheaf should probably be one. Can we get away with that? No. Uh, Id. Ah, it's a category. Ah, it's um, B1. There we go. M dot sheaf. There. Uh, because you see, abelian sheaves are already working. So we've got the identity. They're already a category. And now map smell, we have to prove a theorem. Uh, let's go. Intros. Uh, URM. URM. Uh, and now we've got to prove... Uh, let's try the simplifier. Oh, there we go. That's that's gone well. Um, <laughs> uh, let's squeeze that simp so it's quicker. Uh, there you go. Those were all the what were the lemmas out of interest? What were the lemmas it needed? Uh, so you see that that says that boldface one commutes with val. What was the what was the goal? Uh, yeah, you see, we've got a one, and then we need to commute it with a val, and we need to commute it with an app. Somehow, that's that's what we've got to do. Uh, and then nat trans id app, yeah, it says that one one f app x is one, so that commutes it with the app. Uh, and then there's that says one of x is x. Okay, so that that proof makes sense. So there's id. So now we can put id. Uh... Oh wait, what? Oh, so this is lambda. Yeah, yeah this is lambda m. Uh, maybe I can put id. Can I just put id? Oh, man. Why doesn't that work? Oh, it's the wrong id. Uh, lambda m id m. Oh, it's still the wrong id. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. M has got type. I want this id. Hom.id. How about that? There we go. That's the right id. Uh, so can I just do this? Yeah, and then comp, I'm going to put home.comp. Oh, oh, curses. Oh, that's really annoying. Why doesn't that work? What's the goal? X, one, Y, Z, where's comp? M, N, P. That's perfect, isn't it? Why doesn't home.comp work? At home.comp. Something, 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 something. What? Oh, maybe I, what about lambda something, something, something? Oh, that's worked, I think. Yeah, that's worked. Uh, and now do I, can I get rid of that? Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, perfect. So there we go. Uh, lambda M N P. If you try that in lean4, lean4 complains that you named the variables but didn't use them. And now it, oh, now we have to prove some theorems. Uh, we have to prove, what do we have to prove? It comp. Uh, so we've got to prove that two, okay, I see a problem. We've got to prove that um, intros m, n, there, uh, o and f. Oh, no, five, we're calling it, right, so there we go. Uh, and now this 1M means this, you see, that's the, that's the new one that we've just defined here. Uh, and the problem with this proof is that we need, uh, we don't have an extensionality. What happens if I do X? Yeah, nothing works. Um, let me, the, 
What I want to say is things like two functions are equal if they're the same on all inputs, right? Because, because that's abstractly what we need. Uh, Can't we just uh, use the properties of sheaves of abelian groups? Like we already know. Right, but this is the, thing, but the, the, the problem is this is not. That, that's exactly what. I'm, that's the first thing that an extensionality lemma will do, right? We, we, we need a theorem that says if we've got two morphisms between sheaves of modules, and if the underlying morphism of sheaves of abelian groups are equal, then the sheaves of modules. Do you see? We don't even have that statement yet. If, if the yeah, underlying really. sheaves of abelian groups, uh, the underlying morphism of sheaves of abelian groups is equal, then these things are equal. We don't have anything because we've just made HOM. Uh, let me, but that should be a simple lemma, right? Because yeah, it's by definition just um, I'm going to try uh, deriving. I'm going to try derive. Oh, do, is that how it works? Uh, or is it just this? Let me let me put X. Let me put X by this. Let me just go the, the brain the brainless way. Let me just put a, an X tag there. And now let me see. And now let me see if the X tactic does anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's made progress. Uh, and now let's see if we can simp it away. Oh, curses. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, so we might have to think a bit then. So what does this say? X is, we've got a new variable with the horrible R, X to U and M, M. So now those have got better names. Um, I see we might need some API. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, what the, the problem is here, what I'm doing here, uh, this is a, where does this, so this is a definition, right? This is a definition, and so it needs an API, and I'm making the API, but on the way, I made, I made another definition, right? That was a definition, and it needed an API, which was this. And now this is a definition, uh, but I, but you see, these are more definitions. I need, I need to make some API for this stuff. Uh, so I need, I'll need a lemma. Uh, you see, I need some lemma that says lemma comp absheaf, absheaf or something. Uh, and this should be a simp lemma. And again, it'll, hopefully it'll let me do it. Uh, so I'll have all of this data here. Uh, I want uh, comp, uh, comp phi psi there. I want that thing there. Uh, and then I want the ab sheaf. Uh, I claim that that equals this thing here, right? So that's just true by definition. There, colon equals ruffle. That's true by definition. And now that's a simp lemma. And now, you see, I think simp will get a little bit farther. Uh, yeah, I think so. It didn't it's unfolded something, right? If the, simpl if the simplifier is not doing this, it's because the simplifier needs to be taught how to do it. Uh, yes, yeah, so there we have a hom.comp, right? And we want to get rid of that hom.comp. Uh, and we don't have a hom.comp anymore. Uh, we've got phi, she, da, 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 da. Oh, we've got hom.id. Uh, so you see it's not, we need API for this as well. So we want, it won't, it's stuck on hom.id m ab sheaf, right? I, I want lean to simplify that to be the identity map on the abelian sheaves. Uh, and so this says uh, simp uh, lemma. You see every definition you make, you have to make an API for it. Uh, id ab sheaf. Uh, so let's have, uh, Let's have one of those. Uh, there. Uh, and we want uh, id, uh, id m to m. That thing there. Uh, oh, is it hom.id? Uh, 
when I take the ab sheave thing, uh, that is actually equal to uh, uh, slash b1 uh, on m dot ab sheave. Could you just make the definition reducible? Yeah, of maybe. Maybe I could. And anyway, it's failed to type. It's oh. Uh, yeah, I'm because you see, you want to tell the yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, uh, Colon equals ruffle. Right? It's true by definition. Let's see if we've got any further. Oh, now you see the simplifier has now solved it, right? Uh, so let me, but I'm interested in your question. If we don't have this as a simp lemma and make this reducible instead, uh, let's see if the simplifier solves it now. And it fails to. Uh, and it gets stuck in the same place. So whether or not it's reducible, I need this simp lemma. I guess uh, we then need to make like all definitions reducible, which are relevant here. Oh, I also, ah, I didn't make it reducible. Uh, I didn't put the at in front of it. Uh, so we didn't do the experiment yet, sorry. Let's comment it out. I just wrote reducible in front of it without the at. Oh, and now it still works. So there we go. So if we make it reducible, then hopefully we can get away with the... Oh, do you think we can do the same thing here? Because that says lean actually unfold it anyway, and let's not make that simpler. Yeah, that's worked. And now comp id uh, and hopefully intros x simp will do the same. I should probably squeeze it. See, because now it's taken a long time, but it has worked. I'll squeeze them. Uh, there. And now what does a sock mean? So this is the act, this is the axioms of a category, right? Uh, oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be pain. It's going to be painful. Let's let's squeeze these simps. Otherwise, this proof is going to be painful. You don't ever want it so that the thing is thinking really hard when you're trying to. Oops, missed there. Okay, great. Now this is reasonable speed. So this is intros ext. And now the question is, will the simplifier do it? Simp. Yeah, I think this reducibility trick is good. It's, it's making the simplifier work for us. And it's worked. There we go. Uh, I think squeezing it will give simp only category dot assoc back. If I look at the other two, it's just one category at the moment. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yes, because the only that's the only thing that isn't somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're probably right. Let's find out. Ha ha ha. Ah, okay, that's one. It needed comp val. I. It needed comp val and it needed comp app. Yeah, so I don't quite understand. Uh, but it would be interesting to see whether it can do it with associativity only. Like it seems to have proven the associativity. Ah, uh, maybe. So you want <laughs> me to do simp category, uh, simp only, uh, category dot a sock. That would be interesting. And now let's see yeah. if it... So yeah, you're absolutely right. So let's leave it like that. Uh, and we proved it's a category, and it's um, and it's a uh, five fifty two. Uh, so, and why have we got an error? Invalid. Why have we got an error? End foobar. Now do we have an error? Oh, it starts with category theory dot sheaf dot hom. Uh, I never. Yeah, that was right. That thing I, I need. I never ended that. And that. Great. And now what's the error? The error is that we shouldn't need that. Um, okay. So let me... Uh, I would have another question about the invalid simplification. I'm going to stop recording now. Okay.